Hi everyone, it's Michaela again from Advantage Learn and I am back with you this time to bring you some study tips and the study tips were a request from Diaksha so thank you for requesting that. In our last video I went through and um, chatted about some tips on studying at home and then I asked for people to share their tips and I'm just gonna give a couple of mentions out to those people. Kate sent me a message, she uses her school timetable and a couple of people messaged me after Kate to ask how I think they should structure their time. And I actually, Kate, by the way, I gave them your advice. Okay, so Muriel and Yolanda messaged me as well. They wanted to let me know that they use a timetable or a schedule and that helps them to stop procrastinating and to use their time properly. Yolanda specifically let me know that she downloaded, downloaded a planning app. I think that's a great idea. And then I got a message from James and he has been, he's kind of set up his classroom in his dad's office and he said that being in his dad's office and working there while his dad is working from home helps him stay focused. One thing that I highly recommend before we get going on the different types of note-taking tips is to go ahead and figure out what type of learning style you use. It's important that when you are note-taking that you're thinking about your learning style and adapting your notes to your learning style. The first one we're going to be going through is the outline method. So this method works well for those who like very tidy notes. In this method, you're going to be using bullet points and sub bullet points to connect multiple ideas into one main idea. So the great thing about this method is that it is linear. So it has a clear start and end time. You would have to start at the beginning and end um, in a certain area. That's going to help you to just follow ideas in a very logical manner. It's not going to have ideas all over the place. Another great thing about this tip is that it forces you to shorten your ideas into a single point and then to flesh that out using multiple smaller points. So instead of just writing paragraphs of information, you're forced to um, take all your information and condense it into one single point. One third of the way across the page, a margin is drawn vertically and that leaves about two thirds of the page on the right for the bulk of the notes. So once you've drawn that single line going down vertically, you're going to draw one line horizontally towards the bottom of the page, which is going to leave a small section for you to write on the bottom. So when you draw that vertical line, don't go all the way to the bottom. Make sure you leave room for this last box over here. So the largest box on your page, which is the top right hand box, is going to be used to put the bulk of your notes inside of it. The column on the left hand side is going to be used to either um, put headings in for the information that's on the right hand side, if that helps you, or it's going to be used to pull out key ideas that you want to stand out from the rest of your notes. And then finally, on the bottom of the page, you're going to be using this to create the summary of the notes that you've taken above. The great thing about having the summary section on the bottom is that you're probably not going to be summarizing in class while your teacher's teaching. But after your lesson, you're actually taking the time to go summarize those notes. So you've already written out these notes twice. Okay, so moving on from this is the mind map method. So this is definitely one of the more creative out there kind of methods. It works incredibly well for some people and it really does not work well for others. So I think that the great thing about this is that it doesn't box ideas into one place. Essentially what you're going to do with this one is you're going to start with the main idea in the middle of the page and that would almost act like the header. And then from there, you're going to be pulling out your key ideas or thoughts that stem from that. So that would almost be like your sub bullet points or your subheadings. Um, and then from your subheadings, you're going to be pulling out other smaller ideas that link to that heading. The great thing about this is that if you ever have to write an essay or something like that, it'll just help you to put into words how two ideas connect. Whereas with the outline method, the negative thing about it is that it doesn't show the interconnection between two separate subheadings. Okay, so Another method which is a little bit less common and a lot more messy than any of the ones I've mentioned is the flowchart method. So I actually use this method quite a lot, I would say, um, especially if I'm in a meeting or if I was in a class. Um, this is how I would be taking notes down. It would be very messy. 
um, and I would just write down the points that stand out to me as the person is talking. As I write down these points, I'll be drawing arrows to other points to link the ideas together. It almost ends up forming a mind map that starts from the top of the page and it goes to the bottom of the page. Um, and there's usually these random bursts of thoughts that come out in between, um, which is why it definitely makes it the most messy out of all of the methods. Um, not to say that it is ineffective. So the most effective thing about this is that you're connecting ideas the way that you see them in your mind, not the way the person is saying them. So for example, if your teacher got to the end of the lesson and she said something that made you think about how that links to the first point that she had spoken about, you would just go back to the first point, you would draw an arrow from the first point and you'd say the thing that your teacher had just said that made you think about that first point. So the great thing about it is that your teacher is going through the notes in a way that makes sense to him or her. And then you're able to take those thoughts and convert it to a way that makes sense to you. But yes, if you do have your own tips or your own study methods or note taking methods, please let me know. You can put your comments below this video in YouTube. Um, we also have a Facebook page and Instagram page. Maybe your name will be mentioned in the next video. Um, or maybe there is something that I could learn from you. I hope you guys are staying safe and happy learning.